Hello, this is Lucas with N2B Solutions. Today we are going to show you how to change your SIP port from the default 5060 to something else on your Grandstream PBX. Um, you will also need to accommodate this on your phones. If you're building a new system, then you can change it right away and it'll just push naturally to all of the phones as you use zero config to configure them. Uh, let's take a look at what that looks like and uh, and how it works. Here we go. So this is my phone system. Uh, it's a test system that we use for stuff just like this. The extension we're going to work on is 203 um, and uh, the PBX itself. To start, I'm going to show you, this is zero config, so we're in PBX zero config and I hit the edit button on this particular phone. If I go to the advanced tab, um, I can preview all of the settings that are being pushed to it, including the SIP server, which is uh, the IP address of the phone system. And you will notice here there is no port number after the, the SIP server. That is because it is using the default port of 5060. What we are going to do is go into PBX, SIP, and the general tab has the, the bind UDP port which is the standard UDP port number for SIP on, on this system and by default it's 5060. Today we're just going to flip that to say 5070. If I hit save it's going to demand a reboot before it takes effect. There's another place I want to change so I'm going to cancel that. If I go to NAT under SIP as well you will see your external host has your IP address, I removed ours but your address would be in here or your dynamic DNS address, something like that, so that the SIP provider knows who to send information back to whenever it receives a signal. Um, in the same way, the external UDP port needs to be modified as well to 57. The UDP port here, the external UDP, is the externally mapped UDP port when the PBX is behind a static NAT. So like we are, like we are, like when you're behind a firewall. If you're doing anything with TCP, you'll need to flip this one as well. Um, typically, you're just doing UDP. So, but I like to keep everything uniform, so we're going to flip that. Now, when I hit save, it's going to demand a reboot, um, and this will reboot the phone system, but it will not update the phones yet. So, those three spots are the only three spots on the phone system itself that you have to change to the new address. So we're going to go ahead and do a, a restart here and as soon as we get back we will uh, we will look further in. Alright, our UCM has restarted. We're going to go ahead and log back in here. Um, sometimes it takes a little time even after it comes up from a reboot for everything to re-register um, including your trunks. But once they do um, you want to go to PBX, and we're going to go back to zero config. Um, this is where you will push the information to your current phones. If you're not using zero config, you will need to log into each phone individually to change this setting. Um, otherwise, it will not register to the phone system any longer. So, the uh, the port that's being used was 5060, now it's 5070. Um, this is the extension we looked at before. We're going to look at it again. Only this time, on the advanced tab, we will see the new port and what it looks like. If we scroll down. Now the SIP server, because we changed that bind UDP port, is the full address colon 5070. So whatever you have set your UDP port to will now exist, will now be pushed into all of the config files of every phone on the system, um, but will not get immediately pushed to the phone. So now I am going to tell this, go ahead and push that to the phone. Actually, I'm going to show you something first. We're going to log into the phone just to see it. and see that this is not, does not have the 5670 on the end of it. Now we're going to push it to the phone using the config file. We 
refresh the screen and we'll see that 203 has a new config file created as of our current time. So now I should be able to go back to that phone And you can see it pushed that setting right to the phone. It will show up right on this screen. Now, I have noticed that sometimes it does take a, a minute or two for this registration to, to repopulate. So now that it has a new setting, it still hasn't rebooted or anything. So it'll take time for that SIP registration to renew itself. And uh, that will come in time. We're going to minimize that while we wait for that. But uh, the, the other thing you can check and should know is on the phone as well, there is a, a SIP port, a local SIP port that does not need to be changed. If you go to account one SIP settings, basic, you will see this local SIP port. Um, if you found this, this defines the local SIP port used to listen and transmit. This does not affect calls. This is just for local stuff. So if your phone system and your phone are on the same port or on the same network then this port doesn't need to be changed and pushing the config file after changing the phone system will not change it so you do not need to change it. There we go we got the phone re-registered here so our phone is now re-registered and good to go. Our phone system has been changed using the uh, PBX, SIP, General and NAT tabs and the final step to making everything work is to uh, to go to your SIP provider website, whatever that is, and change the SIP port that they are sending you phone calls on. So <clears throat> sometimes people use registrations to get their calls, um, and that that may not need to change then because it should just automatically register on the new port and. Uh, start working uh, uh, in that way. If you have a, a site that tells you what's the IP address of your phone system so I can send the call to it, you need to give them that IP address typically with the colon port number. So in this case it would be colon 5070 so that it, every time it sent a call it would send it on that port. Um, a lot of SIP providers will just by default send on 5060 unless you tell them otherwise. Um, that's about it. This should work. It should uh, should get up and going right away. Um, all of your SIP devices will need to register on the new SIP port um, and not 5060. So um, that includes PA systems, uh, cordless phones, things like that. Um, those have given me a, a few hiccups every now and then again with stuff that isn't grand stream, but uh, all of it should be able to connect on 5070 just fine or whatever other SIP port you're using. Uh, again, Lucas here, N2V Solutions. You can check us out at n2vs.com. That's N2VS, where am I? Right there. N2V Solutions, network to voice. So we do everything from firewalls to phone systems to cameras. Anything you need help with, we can help you with it. We're going to be coming out with regular videos, so don't forget to uh, check back and see what we got. If there's something you want um, a video on, let me know and I'll see if I can get it created. Um, in the meantime, have a great day.